it's Lori and welcome to the channel. Today I thought I would do an edit along where I'm going to be cleaning up and editing this butterfly image. So I'm shooting out in my garden one early evening and it was kind of hazy light as I was capturing this butterfly. Now this butterfly was moving really fast and so um, I this was one of the best images that I got. There's still a little bit of movement but I still love it and I want to show you how I'm going to clean up the image to reduce some of these distractions and bring all the focus to our beautiful summer butterfly. So let's jump in and get started together. So I'm going to try to do all these edits right here in Lightroom. Now I am using the non-desktop version of Lightroom. I'm using just Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic, but all the editing works the same way. The menu is a little different, but otherwise you can follow along in your own editing. All right, so the first thing we need to do with this image is I want to crop it. So I'm gonna go up to the crop tool and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start with a one-to-one -one and see what that does. But I wanna bring the image over and kind of have the butterfly right there on the rule of thirds. Now I'm going to unlock it so that I can really customize it. So I think I'm gonna bring it in a little bit further and I'm gonna come up from the bottom to just clean it up. Now, because I shoot in RAW and my camera has pretty high pixels, I can typically zoom in this tight. All right, so that's the first thing that I wanted to do. Now, the second thing is because this is a little bit hazy, which I normally don't get, I don't know if my lens had fogged up or if it just was hazy that night, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some dehaze that immediately brings out some detail in this image. Now, the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and work on our subject, the butterfly. So if I look at our histogram, everything looks good. I've got just a little bit of blown highlights right here. So I'm going to just pop those down, but otherwise the histogram looks good. So let's go ahead and do our first mask and I'm gonna try selecting subject and we'll see what it does. We may have to do an object selection, but it doesn't hurt to take just a minute. Yeah, I was afraid it was going to select everything. So let's just delete that mask and let's go ahead and do an object mask. This is usually what I start with. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and kind of make, I like to use the square, hover over the butterfly, and it should detect. Uh, okay. Keep hitting the wrong thing. Let's just hover over that. There we go. Now it did not select the body of the butterfly, but that's okay. I actually prefer this. So I am going to open up the exposure. I'm going to darken the blacks. I wanna bring that definition out. And then I'm gonna come down and go ahead and click some more dehaze. I'm also gonna add some texture and maybe even alter the temperature. So just giving it a little bit more warmth. Okay, nice. Now I want to go back to the top, add another mask, and I'm gonna use the objects again. And let's switch to the brush, and we're gonna enlarge our brush, and we're just gonna select. You don't have to be real specific, but I'm gonna select the body of the butterfly. You can hover, and it did a pretty good job. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the exposure there, and do pretty much the same thing. Darken those blacks. I'm going to keep the shadows open. Open up the whites a little. So just bringing that little guy to life. And I'm going to come down and do a little bit yeah, of dehaze, some texture, and may brighten that exposure just a little bit more to the body of the, umbra, of the butterfly. Now I can zoom in and look at it and it looks pretty good. Now again, remember, I shot this with it moving. I'm not expecting this butterfly to look perfect, but what I can come down and just do a little sharpening, that is gonna help it. I am also gonna do some noise reduction. So that's gonna bring out some more of those details. 
I could try some clarity, but clarity darkens, so I'm not going to worry about that. All right. So I think we're getting there. Now, the next step that I want to do is a unique technique where I like to use mask and I'm going to impact the background. And this is where we can do this in a very selective way. So let's go ahead and do a new mask. First, I'm going to do a linear gradient and I want to actually come down from the sky. We're just going to get right before the butterfly with that. And I'm gonna come down to our temperature slider. I'm gonna give it some more warmth. I really love how the light was shining here. You can see it here. And so I'm going to increase that. I'm also gonna come down and reduce the clarity. Now we could change the color as well. May add just a little bit of some pink tones. And we can see how that's impacting with that. And then we could add some more exposure if we wanted to brighten it. I actually think the darker looks a little bit better, so I'm just gonna do it like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do Create New Mask. We're gonna add a radial gradient, and I'm gonna come up to this area right here in this circle. I'm gonna make it pretty tight, and we're gonna do the similar technique. We're gonna add some warmth, add a little pink tones, just a tiny bit, just a little bit of that warmth. Come down, I'm gonna reduce the clarity, and I may need to even do a little noise reduction. All right, now I'm gonna come back up, add another mask. Let's do a linear in this corner. I'm just gonna come up gently, about right there. Let's try that and see what happens. Again, adding some of that warmth little bit of some of that pink tone to bring in what's around our subject. And then I also want to reduce clarity. Now, if I wanted, I could subtract that off the butterfly, but I really like that nice light. And I'm gonna decide if I want the pink. I do think that that's nice. I'm just gonna pop that warmth a little bit. And now for the last one, I'm gonna come over with a radial. I'm going to do an oval right in this area and we're going to do something similar. So I could have selected the whole background and made these changes, but I like to target the areas of the image because every section has different colors in it and it will really help you customize what you're doing. So I'm going to add some noise reduction here, reduce the clarity. Now we could also add a little dehaze. And that really makes these masks kind of magical. So let's go back to the linear gradient right here and let's add a little dehaze, just a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna go up to this corner and also add a little bit of dehaze. Just gives it that kind of soft, dreamy look. Now I can see a little gap right here. So what I'm gonna do is drag this down to the tip of the butterfly. That's gonna make it really soft and natural because the butterfly would have that light spilling over it. So once you're done doing all of these masks, I encourage you to check it out and see how it's impacting your subject. Now the next thing I wanna do is I don't like this kind of yellow blurb up here. So I'm gonna grab the remove tool. I'm not going to use AI. I'm just going to brush in this area and see what the remove option does. And I'm hoping it's just going to blend this area. It did okay. Let's go over it again. What I like to do when I use the remove tool is I go a little further than what I need so that I get some of those pixels. Um, okay, that's not bad. So just one more time. And that's almost there. Sometimes it takes four to five turns, but it's well worth it to get that final look. And that's not bad. Now let's go to the heel, and I'm just gonna try to heal that little, that one little spot. And I don't think it did a great job. Let's come back and try remove right there and see if we can get rid of it, so. 
That is just going to be stubborn, isn't it? We're going to try one more time and then I may just crop it out. So there we go. Okay, it's a little bit better. I still probably may crop it, but we're doing okay. So last for this image, I think we need to add a vignette. Now I love vignettes because it really brings focus to our subject and it just gives that final look and that final kind of kiss of um, bringing that detail in to our final subject. Now I also could come in and enhance the purple and the blue and our flowers. So I think I may do just a little bit of that. And I'm also gonna go to luminance and increase the purple there to just brighten, brighten that up and brighten the luminance of our yellow. Now our greens are a little dark and let's go back to saturation and maybe some magenta tones. Yeah, I think I wanna do that purple a little bit darker. So I'm gonna come all the way over with it. This is a flock bloom. And it is naturally this kind of magenta color with the magenta stem. So it's really, really pretty. All right, I keep getting that message to update. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with this image overall. Um, so just making some changes with that butterfly, I think it made a big impact. If we look at the before, so you can see how kind of hazy. I could have edited this in many ways, but I wanted to really bring it to life with some warmth as if it was here in beautiful sunshine. So let me get back to the the edited version. All right, so now I have one more. This was a different day at a different location. And let's see, I think, I think this was the guy I was going to edit. Let me go back and check. Yeah, I had a couple butterflies that I had shot. And for this one, I've already um, let's see, I thought I had cropped it, but let's go ahead and do a one-to-one -one crop. And I'm going to just bring that over just a little bit and maybe I kind of like the full story, um, but I don't like that it's so much space above it. So I think I'm going to go with this and um, I, I'll leave that for now. So for this image, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and work on our butterfly first. And so for that, I am going to go ahead and let's do the objects. And let's select the square. And then I'm just gonna come in and highlight our beautiful butterfly. And it did a great job. So now I'm gonna open up the shadows a little bit. Oh, it's just bringing so much detail out. A little, um, I don't really think it needs exposure. Let's come down to texture and maybe a little dehaze. Yeah, just to make it pop. Look at those gorgeous colors. I just really, really love it. All right, and for this, I'm gonna go ahead and let's go back to our main menu. Again, I wanna add that vignette just to encircle our flower and our butterfly and bring that to life. Now I think this upper corner is a little bright, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a mask. Let's do a linear gradient. I'm gonna come down right to the edge of this flower. So you, if you've watched my videos, you know I love linear gradients. I think it's a great tool. It adds a really soft. So this is just gonna darken that area a little bit more, bring down those highlights, and we could even add a little bit of dehaze, which is a magic touch, just to make it a little softer. It also brightens it without it being too harsh. So just a little bit of that. You could also think about adding maybe a little light overall. It just depends if you want it to be more green or a little bit of that kiss of light. Now one final touch, I'm gonna try this. I'm not sure how it's gonna work. Let's go ahead and go add another mask. I wanna do a radial gradient and I'm gonna do it over this entire center. Let's move this over. And what I wanna do is add just a kiss of warmth. There we go. It's just like plus 10, just to really give it that warm summer look, which is what it was. You can see the brightness on my pink flowers. 
Now, if we want to go back to our main edit tool, you could decide if you wanted to tone down the pink flowers, maybe make those a little softer, or you can intensify them. I'm gonna just soften them a little bit. Um, there's probably a little red in there, a little purple, just so that our butterfly is the star of the show. And then this area at the bottom, I'm just gonna leave. If you were gonna print this image or do something else with it, you may want to remove that. It's gonna then make your image really clean. I do see this little petal I'm gonna remove, but I'm gonna leave the rest for now um, because it doesn't bother me. And I think that um, overall our eye goes straight to that butterfly. There we go, we got rid of that. So there's two butterfly images edited for you. I would love to know in the comments your tips and tricks for capturing butterflies as well as editing them. And if you have images to share, send them to me in the comments or in email. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Enjoy the rest of summer.